Hello crafty friends and welcome back to another YouTube mystery swap challenge with my friend Carrie Stamps. This month's challenge we did exchange honeybee dies, honey cuts, and we did a Halloween theme. And I must say I do believe that these are two of my all-time favorite cards. I really really enjoyed doing these. Um, but this is going to be kind of a whirlwind of a video. I have a lot to talk about and to show you, um, but I didn't want to take your whole entire day. So I did speed things up kind of fast, but I think we'll do okay. So the first thing I did was before I sent Carrie's package, I had die cut um, some of the camper. And so I wasn't sure. there. Were, I die cut all different patterns and and I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do and honestly I wanted to do them all so but I had to narrow it down in order to do um, one card to start with so I decided to go this route and I wanted to use my favorite Halloween palette which is oranges greens purples and black um, but the it's pretty typical but I do love these colors together like I think that's why I enjoy these cards so much that these are my colors and Halloween I really do like Halloween um, so I used my Copic marker to color in my pre-cut um, white cardstock but I, I went to use my Wink Estella and I realized with such a large piece that that just wasn't going to work. It was it doesn't have enough in it. I need to purchase another one. So I grabbed out a Nouveau glitter pen. And honestly, I have a lot of these in my stash that I just haven't used that often. But it gave really good coverage. So I need to pull these out and use them more often. So that gave it a lot of shine and that's what I was looking for. Um, I wanted the glitter and shine with, and I, I did find another Wink Estella clear pen that I had. So I just went ahead and touched over on some of those smaller pieces. And now I pulled out some of my black coal Prima, um, chalk, my liquid chalk, which I use a lot for my scrapbooking, but I've been using it a little bit more now in card making. It's just small and convenient and you don't get your fingers all, um, inked up. So so yeah I'm channeling my scrapbook days when I I which I actually still love to scrapbook I just don't take the time to do that right now but someday I'm gonna get back to it um, but I chalk all my edges when I do some scrapbooking and it's kind of nice actually to do a little bit like a familiarity when I'm doing this um, card making um, because I've been doing scrapbooking for many many years and matter of fact shout out to my Katahdin Croppers retreat ladies this was supposed to be our week but of course 2020 came and we canceled this whole entire year so my two retreats one in the spring one in the fall um, were canceled and that's a bummer so I miss the ladies we're normally together on Tuesday to Sunday um, right before Columbus Day here in America. Um, yeah, so I shout out to my Katahdin Croppers. I miss you all. Oh, and now we're getting a little visit from a Ruby Kitty. Yeah, she just was taking over my space. There was some sun coming in, so she had to lay there. So what I did right now is I wanted to light this card up. So my friend Neha had she just did this absolutely wonderful card for our lawn fawn hop which everybody if you have not checked out that lawn fawn hop you should go check that out and carrie and i are both in it and it's fabulous what a group of talented ladies so i cut out mini lights from lawn fawn on vellum and on some glitter cardstock and ruby seems to be taking over more and more of my space um so when i I knew that I just wanted the light bulbs and so I clipped off those bulbs on the glitter string and that was what I'm going to attach on top of the vellum strip of lights and that way it'll give the bulbs that little tiny plug-in out the socket that's it <laughs> that took me far too long okay so that will I want the little glitter part to be on the socket and as you can see, I used my Copic markers in order to color my light bulbs. I wanted them to be on the Halloween theme, and we actually have um, lights on our house right now in these colors. So I thought that was kind of cool. 
and I'm just adding that there and just pushing it down and I'm going to let that set that aside. I'm going to do two strips just like this for the bulbs and set those aside and we will clip those off later and then add them to the card. So now I'm going to start building up my background and I use the grassy die cut from Trinity Stamps in the Great Outdoors Borders and Builders die set and it wasn't quite long because I am making a 9 by 4 card today. Um, I like those ex that extra real estate and I found envelopes at Simon Says Stamps that fits 9 by 4 slimline cards which makes me super excited and I... I, I like it. I like the extra real estate that allows. So I just, I overlap it, run it through twice, and then I get a longer strip. So no worries, it all works out. And I have showed that before in previous videos, how I can make um, regular dies into slimline dies. And so now we're going to blend our background. As you can see, I use six different Distress Oxide colors um, to get this pretty Halloween background. I use Candied Apple ripe persimmon, wilted violet, blueprint sketch, chip sapphire, and black soot. And this did take me a little bit. I added a lot of ink to this card. I started off with my normal ranger um, blending foams, but it was, I, I didn't like the blend that I was getting. So I brought out my life-changing brushes and I found that worked a lot better with all the ink that I was adding to this technique. So I was happy with that. And now I'm just gonna take out my spritzer, my water spritzer and spritz that so I get a nice little starry sky and clean up my area. And now for some reason, I'm not really sure where the footage went with my splattering, but I did splatter some white Distress Oxide paint, not Distress Oxide, Distress paint. Yes, just Distress paint and picket fence. I just watered that down a little bit, splattered that, and then put a little bit of Lawn Fawn liquid dust on there as well. And then I used black soot and just went along my grass border and just gave that a little bit of color and dimension and I wanted to tone down the green. And now I'm just adding some glue to the back, my liquid glue so it has a little bit of wiggle room and then adding that to my bottom of my card. And then I'm just going to snip off those excess. Once it dries, I'm just going to snip off the, the layers on the, the sides. And now I'm going to take my scissors and just snip off all those bulbs. Now they're nice and dry. I don't need the string. And that gives me um, more playroom with the bulbs and how the, to place them. And now I am going to make my space or my hole that I need for the light switch. So what I did is I used my score pal and I just scored a little bit of a line on the back there and then used a pencil to guide where I'm going to cut with my pen tool and I just cut right around those right around that semicircle. And I'm just creating an opening so we can get into there and flick on that switch like on and off that switch and I thought the tree was the best spot to go in you really could pick anything but there and it just needed to be small so that's why I just decided to cut my own all right so see so you can see that it's got a little hinge on there the score helped the score line helped with that and now I'm just going to measure out where I'm going to place the tree so I can start getting everything ready to adhere to the base of the card. And I'm going to have to put that opening back into the strip of grass. And now I'm going to just add some fencing. And again, I needed the placement of the tree so I know where to put that. I use a ton of die cuts for both of these cards. I will link what I can in the bottom um, in, the, in the description. However, some of them are, have been in my stash for a while, so I'm not sure if I can find the links, but I will do my best. This is, a lot of what I'm using now is from Memory Box or Poppy Stamps. It's stuff that I've had for a while and I absolutely love it. It's kind of my go-to Halloween stuff. Um, but this year I get to play with it a lot more than I have been in the past, which makes me happy. So now I'm just chalking up um, little gravestones that I'm clipping from a graveyard border. I just wanted the stones on that and I, I liked how tiny they were. 
So I just clip those right off the border and I'm chalking those up and I'm going to slip those behind the fence. But first I'm going to cut out that hole and get that all the way through because again we need to have that for that switch. And I mean it's not maybe the most perfect hole if I had, you know, if there was a small die cut that made those that for us, but you know, it's okay. It's going to it works. And now I like this art glue because of the precision. You saw how um how detailed you can get on that tree with that tip, that precision tip on that is fabulous. So I adhered the camper, which that is Honeybee's camper die. Isn't that cute? It's, I, I, I absolutely love it. A lot of paper piecing in these cards, but it's super fun. I enjoy it. And I'm just going to slip on, and here I had a, like a little glue mishap. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I definitely got over glued, squished it out. So I just had to clean that up. And now I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put everything. I had so many things cut. <laughs> and I wanted to back the jack-o'-lanterns with a little bit of a yellow glow. So I took vellum and I just used a Y19 um, Copic marker and just colored on that vellum. And then I stuck the pumpkins right on top of that. And then I just trimmed it out, as you can see, the jack-o'-lanterns. And so that gives that, that nice little warm yellow glow right behind it, and it looks like they're lit up. So that's a simple little step. And now I'm my base card is 9 by 4 like I stated. So now I'm just trying to place where I want the lights. So I'm just using my fingers. Now, okay, now let me tell you, my friend Neha did this so slick. She had herself all organized and together and look at my light mess. Yeah, this is kind of how I roll. If you could see that my, my whole space was a disaster by the time I was done with all of this. And well, it's still kind of, as I'm doing the voiceover, it still is a disaster in here. I pulled out like so much. So what I'm doing with these lights, I'll link these below. I got these on Amazon. I'm just twisting the wires. I'm going from light to light because as you can see the string of lights is too long for something like this so you have to make do and just twist them together and it, it they're pretty sturdy so you can do that and I'm using a double-sided strong tape in order to put the little light switch box to the card um but yeah so I was a lot like more of a train wreck than <laughs> Neha was when she did her light up card but I made it work and it, yeah, she had it a lot neater on the base of the car too. So next time maybe I can do a little bit better with that, but it worked. And now I'm just using my fingers and guiding along where those bulbs were and just making a little pencil mark. So I know where to start um, using my paper punch. And this was actually kind of scary. You know, you work all this time on the card and then you just start punching holes in it. But yeah, but I needed to be able to illuminate it, so that's what I had to do. So I'm just using a punch. And wait till you see. Next, I'm going to pull out something really old school. My old eyelid punch. Um, I woke up a couple people in the house, because this was late at night that I was doing this. But I got out the hammer and the eyelet, eyelet setter and made myself some holes where the my paper punch wouldn't reach. So there you go. Now, let me give a little disclaimer. Soon I am going to show you. I wish that I had opened up that window and back on the bottom where the jack-o'-lanterns go. I wish I had opened those up a lot wider. Um, and you can see I struggled with that later. So now I'm just going to go simply and place my lights. What I'm doing is putting, because vellum can be tricky, so I'm going to put that the adhesive on the tip of the socket. And then I'm going to cover everything with glossy accents, but then I realized that I wanted to put a little highlight on those. So that first light's not going to have it, but the rest of them have a little bit of highlight before I put the glossy accents on. Now the glossy accents are going to do several things. One, it's going to give a little bit more dimension to the light and a little more shine. And it's also going to help with the vellum getting it adhered down without having some weirdness behind it because vellum can be finicky when it comes to adhesives. So what I did is I put a little on my acrylic block and used my tweezers and got right underneath the tip of the lights and I just held them down with my tweezers just for a couple seconds each and that adhered them to the cards. And that gave that dimension, it gave it shine. And I did the same with the jack-o'-lanterns right there. I filled in their eyes and their mouth. And then I also did it with the windows. 
so it made it look like glass. And I did like the way that worked. All right, so now I have to set that aside and let all that dry. So I'm gonna work on my base. I'm going to um, first put a little bit of black cardstock right where the switch is because you're gonna be able to see that opening. And so I just wanted it to blend a little bit with the tree. And I'm just, and I used scotch tape when I put that, when I put the wires down. So I just used simple scotch tape. And here is where I'm showing you that I truly wish that I had opened up that those windows. So now it took me like 45 minutes of trying to go easy with my pen tool. And yeah, it, it, that was a little bit of a work. And you can see that I did a triple layer of foam backing tape in order to get that same dimension as the light switch. And right, backtracking a little bit, sorry. Like I said that this is kind of a whirlwind of a card today, I'm sorry. But I used a glitter gel pen in order to add the strings between the lights. And now I'm chalking up a few more of the pieces and then I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere the card together. We're getting to the point where we're, we're getting to the end of this but I absolutely loved it. Okay, so going back to my Scotch foam tape, I did do a triple layer, which normally I just do double layers when you're doing like a shaker, but because of the dimension of the light switch, you had to go a little bit higher. So that was also um, from Neha. So she she did a fabulous card. I will I probably will link her below so you can see. And now I wanted this kitty's eyes to glow so again, I just um, used my Copic marker and I cut out the eyes so he would have the green eyes right back in there. So I just popped in a little glue and then popped those eyes back in. So now I have the card all placed together. I added a few bats on the top and now I'm using a black gel pen to fill in the, um, the eyes and the mouth of the little ghosts and a little bit of Wink Stella on the cat's eyes. And now here it goes. I'm going to see if all my placements of my lights worked. I'm just gonna add that they're the same size so they can go together really easily. I had a little bit of scotch tape hanging there. And there, <clears throat> I was really happy with the glow. I'm adding a little tab here for so you can pull that. And that's one thing I wish that that would lay a little flatter and you know, there might be a way that I just missed and at the end of the card, you're going to see that I added a sentiment, home is where you're haunted. So I added that to the bottom and that was card number one. So here we go with my mystery package from Carrie. And she sent along the Honeycut Barn with some cute pattern papers that I absolutely love. Um, and some of the die cuts cut as well, just like I did. And look at that fabulous card that she sent. Isn't that beautiful? I love, I have like a little collection of carry cards now and I love that. I kind of hang them up and yeah, I love it. I'm pretty sure that that's a not too shabby stamp too. Yes, it is. I just double checked that. So I was pretty excited. I actually got a card from Jamie too. So I'm like, oh, I got a card from Carrie that has a Jamie stamp on it and a card from Jamie. That's just, yeah, things like that make me happy. So I was kind of pulling my hair out. There are so many possibilities. And does it ever happen to you when there are so many possibilities that your brain just doesn't know what to do? Yeah, well, that happens to me a lot. So what I decided is I've wanted to play with like a shiplap or clapboard kind of pattern for a while. So I thought, well, a barn might be a good way to do this. So I decided to go this route. I just cut a um, piece of 110 Nina cardstock out and then I'm using a T ruler to go a quarter of an inch down on each side and then I just connected those and I'm going to make my own little clapboard kind of thing. So yeah, that's what I did, but there are so many more possibilities and so many more things I want to do with this, but this is a technique that I've wanted to try, like I said, so I'm going to try it here. And I think it came out pretty, pretty decent. And I'm using that same colored purple palette that, you know, my Halloween palette and I'm using, um, Y01. No, that's yellow. I'm not using Y01. I'm using V01 and then V12. V15 and then I'm going in with a C0 just in order to get kind of that little distressed look to it. 
and blending it all out. I really like the way it turned out and now I'm using, well, now I'm still playing, which I did a lot of playing with these cards, trying to decide because like I said, the possibilities are absolutely endless and you could really drive your mind a little wacky because there's so much you can do and I wanted to do it all. I still want to do it all. I'm planning on maybe doing another video or even two of more of these and I maybe I won't have to go so fast but I really really truly enjoy enjoy these two die cuts the sets they're they're absolutely I love honeybee anyway so these are fun um and now I'm just playing along or playing with some of the things that Carrie sent she sent me some cool buttons and googly eyes and bats and look at the, that little windmill thing from I absolutely love those anyway I just I love this whole barn look isn't that pretty? So now I'm just, like I said, trying to play. And then I decided that I'm going to pull out another honey cut. And it's the little the little pickup truck um, paper piecing. So I'm like, yeah, this will be fun to, to pair with that with this card. So I cut all of that out. And I just did it all in my scraps in my stash. And I have a cat that's trying to bust into the room again. <laughs> and... And I did the purple dots on um, paper for the truck. Just added that all together. I paper pieced it. And then I'm going to the fenders. I'm going to pop dot up to give that a little dimension. Isn't this set fun too? I mean, this is another honey cut. Honeybee Stamps is amazing. I They've long been one of my favorite companies. And I have a lot of their products in my stash. And I like that I dug them out and started actually using them. That's what this whole year has been about for me with starting my YouTube channel was getting, you know, back to something that I love to do and not just being a collector of all the good things um, to actually start using them all. So that is fun to me. So going back into my stash sometimes is okay, even though, you know, you might not have the exact same thing and you might not be able to get it because it's back in my stash a little bit, but you can, you know, there's always something that's similar and you can always find something that's similar to, to it. So now I'm going to add a little bit of the baby ghosts. This is what I'm calling them. They're little baby ghosts in this truck. So this is a truck full of ghosts and I decided that that's what I wanted. You know, I'm not so sure that, it, that ghosts have to be riding in a truck, but they are. And then this is the mama ghost. Yeah. Yep. See, I'm making up my own stories. I was doing this kind of late at night. This was like as fast as this is going on the video, it was a crafting extravaganza. Uh, you could see, look at my desk, you guys. <laughs> it was a mess, and, but it was fun. It was just so much fun. So I did this background the same exact way that I did the camper, um, the same colors and everything. And I splattered, everything was the same. So now I'm just adding some of these fun spider webs. And I wish that, I, you know, I don't have a spider, it appears, in my in my supply. So that's something that I need to work on, I think, because a, a nice spider on the side of that barn would have been fun. So I'm adding that little roof that Carrie sent and these little barn doors or a barn door. I'm adding that. And then I'm going to play. At this point, I'm still thinking I'm going to use that orange glitter. But no, I don't because, you know, again, the possibilities are endless. So I went with a softer purple. I'm just going to add that little um, loft door next. See, I'm still thinking that I'm going to go with the, yeah, but it's not going to be that way. It's going to be purple. <laughs> oh. I want to do fall too. I already put together a fall camper. And you would have been able to see it, but, you know, Ruby Kitty came and visited and then kind of laid on it. Um, but I have a fall camper set that I wanted to do. And see, there it is. Voila. Now they're purple. So I'm going to put those little negative door spaces back in. And I just thought that looked a little bit nicer with my theme. The, the orange was a little bit too bright for me at the moment. So I went with the softer purples and that matched with everything. And you see that I also did the same exact grassy border that I did for the other one. Now I'm just using glue dots to put a couple of those buttons that Carrie sent. Now I'm just going to trim. Well, I started to trim off that spider web, but then I decided, you know what? It could connect to the tree and actually look kind of cool with that background. 
Now I'm just going to start going ahead and adhering all of the pieces and see I want I kept a little bit of that gluing in so you can see that how that precision tip on the art glitter glue works it really it does a, a great job with all these little details and intricate when you're working with these die cuts now I'm just layering everything I'm gonna get that mama ghost in there I had to clip off a little bit of the spider web on the top of the roof there I'm going to add all the baby ghosts and you see I did back them with a little piece of black cardstock behind each of them so you couldn't see the sky through their mouths. I thought that just looked better. Now I'm going to take these little hay bales or hay bale and I'm going to use a little bit of um, E35 I think or E34 and just add a little bit of those details in that you that is already in the die cut just bringing it out a little bit. I'm going to pop dot that up. I used a little Wink of Stella on the roof there just for a little shine. I'm going to put a little jack-o'-lantern from the other card that was still left over. And we're going to put another baby ghost on there. And see, that's how I backed. I just popped a little bit of a um, cardstock on the back of that, the ghost. And now time to add our bats. I thought it would look fun to have those bats come right out of the loft. Look at look how see how many layers and how much fun. Now this is what to me what crafting is about. This was fun to piece together all these different sets, um, and what Carrie mystery you know what she mysteriously sent to me, and so I didn't know all the little elements. And no, I didn't use them all, but that will give me more things to play with in the future. And this is a massive card. It's a six by six card, which is almost you could you know I don't know give put up up as a work of art but and the, that was boo kitty boo kitty just came to see us so both of the cats like my new craft space they like to get into it they never did that in my old craft space i'm not really sure but they like to get right on my work surface so for a sentiment i grabbed out kindred spirits stamp or kindred stamps um sentiment from their haunted manter <laughs> holy that was hard for me to say their haunted manor set and then it said um home is where you're haunted and i put that on both of the cards today and there you have it uh that was a whirlwind of crafting i love it though i love how they both turned out like i said i like um, Halloween. I love the way the lights can look at the way that the lights are in the graveyard. I love the way that illuminates that a candied apple. Yeah, pretty. Well, thank you so much again to Carrie for doing the mystery swap with me. I absolutely look forward to these and um, love watching Carrie's videos to see what she did with the same products. Um, last month we were very similar, so I cannot wait to see what this month will bring us. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Uh, make sure that you pop over to her channel. I will have it linked below. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate your subscription and your support. 